We got up bright and early to hit up a water hole close by as soon as the gates opened at sunrise. We didn't find anything, so we headed back for breakfast. Then we headed back out for the day. We explored new water holes, seeing lots of zebra, antelope, a few more giraffe and elephant. I decided to hook my GoPro up to our windshield, but the road in Atosha is rough, incredibly rough in spots, with huge potholes covering large sections and impossible to dodge. My GoPro mount eventually snapped with all of the bouncing around it did.
Up until this point, we'd only seen Kudu from far off, so it was nice to see some closer up, and a few more harder beasts. Jesse spotted another couple birds, a pale chanting goshawk high up in a tree, and a quarry bustard strutting around in the grass. We had a really close encounter with an elephant that was grazing just off the side of the road. We drove slowly by, giving it as much space as we could. We stopped to watch it, but then it turned and slowly started walking straight for us. By the time Jesse got the Jimny in gear to drive away, the elephant could have touched the car with his trunk. It was a pretty intense moment. The Atosha Pan is one of the larger salt pans in the world, at 4,730 square kilometers. It can collect water, but when it evaporates, a deposit of salt remains. We also caught a couple glimpses of Steenbach, an adorable small antelope that weighs only 15 to 35 pounds. Mostly solitary animals, we tended to always spot them under the shade of a small tree. Since we often were driving long distances and there wasn't always a gas station nearby, we always had a gas can on the roof of the chimney. Once back at Halali, I headed straight back for my spot at the waterhole. I honestly couldn't get enough of it.
There was one baby elephant I particularly loved watching. This little one was always hamming it up. When I first got to the water hole, there was only one lone elephant, but I waited patiently and all of a sudden I could see tons of them coming out from the trees towards the water hole. The lone elephant turned and walked towards the others and the others surrounded it, all patting each other with their trunks, almost as if they were greeting the elephant that was waiting. It was such a cool moment to witness and one I will never forget. Tuesday we got up in good time, had breakfast, and then hit the road. Today we would be leaving Atosha and starting our drive to Victoria Falls.
drove towards the eastern gate, seeing lots more animals along the way, including some eland, which was our first time seeing that species of antelope. We made a quick stop at the Namutoni camp and eventually said goodbye to Atosha National Park. We stopped for lunch at A Hungry Lion, which is a well-known fast food restaurant in Africa that Jesse wanted to try out. Then we grabbed some food and snacks to put in our cooler. Hey, that's a fluff bar, right? Uh, but what does a fluff taste like? We'll see. We spotted some warthog along the side of the road and had to stop to see them since we never spotted any while we were inside the park. Our destination for the evening was Devindu, and we had booked a cute little spot right on the water. The hotel was in a little gated area complete with restaurant, so after unloading the Jimny, we walked over for a bite to eat. <laughs> 